Chapter 3.1 Day 2, we're solving quadratic equations by factoring. If the product of two factors, of two expressions is factorable, then one or both of the expressions equals zero. If a and b are expressions and a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero, it could be both. Uh, so we're gonna solve each equation by factoring. So in these cases, uh, we wanna always set it equal to zero first if it's not set equal to zero first. And the other thing um, we can do with these or notice with these is that our a value is one, okay? Uh, so let's set it equal to zero first. So for example, three a, it's not set equal to zero. So let's subtract 45 from both sides. So get x squared minus four a, I'm sorry, minus four x minus 45 equals zero. So then what we can do with these if you need some extra help, don't remember, um, or need some help in factoring, uh, we can use the x method. So the top is always a times c. Now the a value here is just one. Now remember this comes from ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? So our a value, the number in front of the square is just a one, and then the c value is negative 45. So this is negative 45, and then the number that goes on the bottom is the b value, negative four. So the sign does matter. So attic time ceiling, and then the bottom is the basement, the b value, okay? So that's where that comes from. And so we look at what are factors of negative 45 that multiply to negative 45, but adds to negative four. So because this is negative, we know that it should be opposite signs. And then the negative four at the bottom, that means the larger number must be negative. So 45, that's nine times five. And then, so nine times five is 45, but it needs to be, one of them has to be a negative sign. And looking at the negative four at the bottom, I need it to be the negative nine. Because negative nine plus five makes it a negative four. So because a equals one, I can go ahead and factor immediately. So this is x and then minus nine and x plus five equals zero. Then we use uh, what we talked about earlier is a zero product property. We set each piece equal to zero. So x minus nine equals zero and then x plus five also equals zero. So that's what it says up here. If a and b are expressions and a times b equals zero, then a equals zero or b equals zero. We're trying to see what makes this equation true, what makes it equal to zero. So we can add nine to both sides on the left. So we notice that x equals a positive nine. Then on the right side, if I subtract five from both sides, then we notice that x equals a negative five. And those are our solutions. And I know some of you can do this without having to do this part here, the zero product property. You just know that it's the opposite sign. Now I do need to see that the factored form here. So I don't want you to not do that. You can't just come from this, these factors here and write the answers. You need to write the factors in first and then write the answers of x equals x equals. Let's look at example 3b. We have f of x equals x squared minus 8x. And so if you notice, we don't have a constant. Uh, what we can do in this case is we can look at the GCF, the greatest common factor. What can I divide out of both terms? So I can divide out an x. And then of course it should be set equal to zero. So zero equals, and we factor out the x, that must come out in front because that is one of our answers. And then we're left with x squared over x is just x. And then the x is canceled and this is a minus eight. So now we can set each piece equal to zero. So x equals zero, and then on the right side, x minus eight equals zero. So whenever you see a variable in the front by itself, you can set it equal to zero. And notice, look, it does equal zero, and that's our solution on that side. Then on the right side, x minus eight, you add eight to both sides. And so now you know that x equals eight. So our two solutions are zero and eight. If we were to graph this, our intercepts would be at zero and at positive eight for this parabola. So try out these four examples down here. So uh, number two, for example, two and four are both GCF problems to help you out. And number one and number three are similar to the one above that. And remember to set it equal to zero force before you start. All right, if you tried this out, notice that for number one, you have to add 30 to both sides first. And so then you get x squared minus 11x plus 30 equals zero. Then 30 is on top. And what multiplies to positive 30 that adds to negative 11? Well, that's negative 6 times negative 5. 
Then you factor it, x minus 6, x minus 5 equals 0. Use the zero product property if you need to show this step. And then x equals 6, x equals positive 5. For number 2, you can take out the GCF of x out of both. And then, so don't forget that goes in the front because that is still one of our intercepts, one of our solutions. And then when you divide it, you're left with x plus 11. Then do the zero product property, x equals zero. So that's one of our solutions. Then we have x plus 11. And so we have x plus 11 equals zero, subtract 11, so x equals negative 11. For number three, we write 25 on top and then a negative 10 in the bottom. And negative five times negative five is a positive 25, and that adds to a negative 10. So write my, I write my factors as 0 equals x minus 5 times x minus 5, or I can also write that as 0 equals x minus 5 squared. So it's the same exact answer. Then I do 0 product property, x minus 5 equals 0, or x equals positive 5. So I only have one x-intercept. That tells me that the vertex is moved over to the right at the 5. That's why there's only one. For number 4, that's a GCF problem. And so we can actually divide out a number and a variable. So we divide out 3x. So notice the 3x is in front. When we divide it, we're left with an x. And then 6x over 3x is a negative 2. Then we use zero product property. Notice that the 3x equals 0 divided by 3, x still equals 0. Then on the right, x minus 2 equals 0. And then we add 2 to both sides, so x equals 2.